um, which we really want to get a lot of feedback and input from the general public who live along there, who use it regularly to ensure that whatever is, is scope of work ends up coming out of this is one that we have a, an agreement on across the board as best we can get. And that really meets the needs and intents of what we're trying to do with this road, which is a road that really services all uh, commercial, residential, uh, library, a lot of transit goes through here. So there's a lot of things we're trying to do in this corridor. And uh, we really want to get the public feedback and input on that. So we went through a process of an RFQ process and got two responses. Um, we have selected Avenue Consultants. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to Linda to kind of get into a little bit more specifics about exactly the uh, scope of work and everything they're going to be doing on that. Thanks, John. Good evening, Council. Nice to see you. Um, as John mentioned, um, we've given. Oh, Sorry, I should mute it. Sorry. Um, a quick overview of the timing of the project. Um, wanted to talk a little bit about public involvement and actually some of the extra efforts we're putting into this project going forward. Um, we think it's a very important part of the success of the project um, and being proactive with this because we want to um, be proactive early and often communicate with our stakeholders on the front end of their project. So there's lots of opportunity for education and outreach and um, will lead to less frustration as we're implementing and completing the project. It's a significant community street and a wide variety of stakeholders. A lot of people live, work and play along uh, Lower Park Avenue. So using it as access to Old Town, lots of residents along the way. We've got the library and the park. So very important that we make sure that we reach out to these different stakeholder groups. Um, as we mentioned, it's a very expensive project. So we want to make sure that the community is happy with um, the results and want to make sure we're doing it right. As John had mentioned, um, we feel it's important for this project that we partner with an experienced public involvement firm. And we did uh, launch um, an opportunity for three firms to submit a bid to participate. We set the project goal at $60,000. Um, it would be approximately a five to six month project um, working with a team of about five to six individuals. So we felt that was a, a good amount to budget for. Um, we did go ahead and select Avenue Consultants. Um, I've worked with actually several members on Avenue before, as have several of my colleagues on staff. Uh, very impressive firm, great experience, and they had a lot of project experience similar to what we're asking them for for the Lower Park Avenue project. Um, just wanted to share some strategy. It's something that we employ in our department here, as well as Avenue and a lot of the other firms, um, the IAP2 public participation spectrum. So this is a great lens that we look at when we're doing a project and sort of measure kind of on the scale there, how do we want to frame our outreach and our plans um, involving the public? So the goal for this particular project as uh, Avenue has recommended is the involved stage. So we want to work directly with our stakeholders throughout the process, listen to their concerns, uh, their goals, and make sure they know that we're hearing them and validate, validate those contributions and that we promise to the public we're going to work with them to ensure that those con concerns are dec re I'm sorry, reflected in the alternatives um, that we come to. So the different the scope of work we've asked them to do is to develop a strategic, proactive, and professional public outreach program. We really want to focus on interactive tools so we make it easy for folks to participate, whether it's an in-person meeting or an online survey, um, giving different feedback on a project website, things like our Engage page, hosting vision workshop, workshops, and of course using surveying. Uh, we'll also have the group work with us on scheduling and hosting a series of public outreach events. So looking to go where our residents are is a strategy that we like to do, but also create some, some different ways to engage and get feedback. And then to also be able to refine and adjust our outreach materials throughout based on what we're hearing from the public. And then we'll come back to you and we'll come to with the project team with a detailed summary of the outreach and the feedback we collected along the way. Uh, timeline that Avenue is uh, proposing, doing phase one starting in August. So a lot of our planning, looking at some of the discussions we've had around the pilot program for Park Avenue, um, and then uh, taking that feedback, developing a plan, putting together three different themed advisory committees. So a core project team, which is primarily staff and a city council liaison, technical advisory committee, which would be leaders from Park City and Park City agencies, and most importantly, the stakeholder committee. So looking at key stakeholders that will work to help identify, including residents, uh, HPCA um, representatives, and those who live, work, and travel on Park Avenue. 
Um, and then phase two will be the implementation of that program. So we're looking at September through November, really wanting to take advantage of the time that folks are back from summer travels and vacations um, and before the holidays. And so we'll go out and uh, kind of share results of the pilot program, uh, working on that survey, gather recommendations and recommend a final concept to staff and council that meets the community's needs. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, one of the reasons we did um, select Avenue was they've done a lot of similar projects. Um, I believe I included a copy of their proposal in your packet, but did want to call out a few here um, that were on the Wasatch Front, um, multi-jurisdictional with the Mid-Valley Active Transportation Plan, um, the Highland Drive uh, 1100 East concept design and the 3300 South con um, concept design were very similar to what we're looking at doing with Park Avenue. And you're probably familiar with the Jeremy Ranch roundabouts um, a while ago. So they worked a little bit on some public outreach around that project. So that's uh, just a quick overview of what we're looking to do and happy to answer any questions. John, when would you anticipate starting the whatever it is you're going to do to Park Avenue? Yeah, actually starting construction? Yeah. We're looking at 2024 is when we would start it. So we would spend this next year finalizing all the scope, getting everything down so we have a clear scope of work and then start the design process of putting the plans and specifications together. And there's a lot of utilities that are involved. Um, and so that's a lot of time for coordination to give them opportunities to uh, update and move their plant, uh, excuse me, pipes and infrastructure around as needed and necessary. And so there's gonna be a lot of coordination for this. Okay. So that's why we're expecting construction of beginning of spring of 24. Okay. Any other questions, Becca? Yeah, um, I'm just curious because um, since we did do the pilot program on Park Ave, will we have information also as part of this um, discussion about what's actually working on the street and some of the changes that have been made um, in adjustments to parking and the striping? Because I know we heard a lot about it when we first did it, and now I, I'm not really hearing anything. And I'm just wondering if we have good data that's been collected around that that will be presented with all of these Yes, um, we have data, I believe that was collected up till this point, and I anticipate that we would go back and do some refining of that and maybe additional as we're forming the survey for the project, bring some of that out as well. But we do have a um, good data and, and survey results from that, and we have an active um, Engage Park City page that we were utilizing for that, which had a lot of um, traffic and worked well for us. So. I did have a couple of questions. Uh, the first was, is this Reminding, is this just all lower Park Avenue and not upper? So we're talking like Heber down. Uh, okay. And then we'll, this is maybe getting into the weeds, but it's something to think about. Are we going to approve um, building permits to homes and different businesses during the time that we're doing this construction? Yeah, that wouldn't wouldn't stop them from having or being able to do improvements to homes. Uh, but obviously something that would have to be coordinated. Yeah, uh, but it wouldn't necessarily necessary. So it'd be like it's phase. Yeah, so. I guess I'm just trying to figure out if we're like just ripping up the whole road for the whole time, or if we're going phased project. It's going to be a phased project. It okay. might take a couple construction seasons, given the the volume of traffic that uses it, the amount of utilities that we have to relocate and fix. Um, we are proposing to do a it's called a general manager, general contractor contract which is to get a contractor on board before the plans are finalized in order to get them um, started on um, putting their stage uh, construction stages together because it's going to be a very complicated project to construct appropriately and with minimizing as much as we can impact to people to be able to get to homes, get businesses, et cetera. So it's going to be a, a lot of coordination with that effort. So we're trying to do this process to get them uh, a contractor on board and thinking about that before they even come out there to start doing the work. Okay. And I, I assume this will come up, so I just want to bring it up and it's probably an obvious question, but if it is a couple seasons, that doesn't mean that it would mean that we would, let's say we start in 2024 and we complete, we would complete one section of the road before the winter came. So we wouldn't be like completely blocking a road for a whole winter. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that would be the goal. That would be part of the criteria that we would instruct the contractor is that during the winter time the road has to be open in some form or another so that would be part of his challenge of putting his construction schedule together to construct it in a way so that by the winter time comes we have a, an open road that can be used jeremy <clears throat> looking at their proposal 
and how they'd intend to gather feedback. I honestly found some of their ideas a little strange. When they gather it, are they going to, are we going to keep with that data indicating where it came from? Or are they planning to aggregate as general community feedback? I think just in the projects that I've worked on and what we would offer some additional guidance, obviously, and work very closely with them. Um, I'd tweak a few of the ideas that they had suggested, um, but I would keep them detailed in terms of the different events and who we talk to and, and log it that way. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Let's, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I guess this might be a more general question, but as I read this, I was just thinking about um, you know, a lot of this stuff seems like things that we're getting pretty good at or that we want to be really good at around public outreach and all the public outreach we're doing around the Olympics, you know, Park Silly, Kimball, it seems like we we're talking a lot about public outreach. Like, how should we think about these types of projects in terms of like skills? Should we be building these skills in house? Is this more of a tools question where it always makes sense to go to a consultant? Like at, at what I mean, you start adding up FTE is the amount we spend on this stuff. You know, how, how do we think about that going forward? Would you like to answer that? Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to. Uh, Matt Dye, city manager. You know, I think it's a fine question, and we had a pretty rigorous debate internally. Um, to take a step back, I think it's important to realize this is a major street reconstruction project that has uh, significant stakeholders at play and has become sort of an arterial to get to Main Street. So you have institutional uses at the city park, the library, miners, you have a whole host of longtime local residents that all feed into this corridor. And then it abuts our business district. Concurrently, I'm reminded by our public works director and engineer, this is one of the like big, probably major street overhaul chances that this mayor and council and maybe this administration will get while we're here. So you're looking at probably over a $10 million, if not more project when all is said and done. And it's a full suite of improvements. So it's storm and gutter and curb and all of the laterals. This isn't just a three and a half mil, a three and a half inch mill and overlay. And they're in and out in two days and our public works department works with the contractors. So for all of those reasons, because it's sort of a once in a lifetime opportunity for us, it's that once in a lifetime opportunity for our stakeholders and for our residents, we wanted to take a step back and make sure we got this one right. Conversely, um, we are deploying the team in a myriad of other areas when we do smaller pilots and smaller street um, overhauls in the community. So, for instance, the public uh, engagement team is working with a bunch of residents and business owners at the top of Main Street. We kept that one in-house. We thought it was something that we could handle as a team. We've had a bunch of charrettes. I think we had one night at the library one night here in council chambers. And so it's a fine question and I think it depends, but we had a long and comprehensive discussion about saying, gosh, this one's so important. We've got to get it right. We should take a meaningful step back and really plan for this to make sure it's a complete street. I, I hasten to say, if you know, you come back here in 20 years, the decisions that you make today, well, not today, the decisions you make in a couple months are what's going to be out there. So it's very, very important. And that's the reason we wanted to add some extra due diligence. Yeah, and I mean, and to be clear, I asked the question, you know, not by way of, of criticism of, of the team. It's actually, you know, complimenting in a way because I see us doing more and more outreach and building skills on your team, Linda. And so, um, you know, hoping to keep pushing that further. But, but I, you know, your answer makes sense. Well, let's go ahead and open public input. Is there anyone here that would like to make a comment on this? Anybody online? No hands raised, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Council, more questions or a motion? Your Honor, I move to approve new business item number two. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to consider Ordinance 2022-24, an ordinance amending Title II, Chapter 3, Sections 1 through 6 of the Municipal Code of Park City. Ms. Plain. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Thank you, Council. Yes. I'm not used to having items on the agenda. <laughs> and the city manager was distracting me. Um, <laughs> I do have siblings, obviously. Sorry. Yeah. Um, okay, so before you is are some changes to Title II, Chapter 3 of City Code. Um, as explained in the short staff report, this section of City Code was adopted um, 
in 2000, I don't even have the item in front of me, I apologize, um, was adopted a number of years ago when the city was adopting the revised six member council form of government. So the state legislature made changes, Park City then wanted to adopt those. These, this Title II, Chapter Three was um, enacted to conform with that. At the time, the city also incorporated a lot of state code into city code. So what we're recommending as we sort of modernize the code is removing a lot of that. So everything that's being removed is from the 2009 version of the Open and Public Meetings Act. The Open and Public Meetings Act has since been revised. The city is very good about following it. And we would rather not have to amend city code when state law changes. And in fact, we haven't always been in lockstep with that. And so this cleans that up. The other change this makes is that it brings Park City code in line with state code. Under state code in the six member council form of government, a quorum is defined as three members, not including the mayor. Under city code, since this was adopted, um, a quorum was defined as two, three members of the council and the mayor is defined as a member of the council, which of course she is in state law too. But so this brings it in line and it makes clear that two council members and the mayor does not constitute a quorum. And just as a reminder, the policy behind that is that the mayor um, typically doesn't have a vote. She votes in limited circumstances um, as defined by state law. And so the quorum requirement in state law is a little bit broader than what it has been in city code. So we just recommend bringing that in line so there's no question. Any questions? Let's take public input. Is anyone here or online that would like to comment on this? Any hands raised? No hands raised, Mayor. Okay. Any further questions, comments, or a motion? So in light of the impact of this, because we made liaison assignments under a different umbrella, right, with a, a different setup, um, and you know, I'm good with this, I think we should line up with state code, but I also think we should revisit some of the liaison roles where we're going to have three folks moving forward and make sure everyone's comfortable that that feels like a good solution in whatever the specific area is and that it's representative. It doesn't feel like we're having a council meeting outside of the council meeting kind of thing, even sure. if it's legally not. Is that a discussion we could have at the retreat, do you think? Yeah, I, I don't care when. I just want to make sure we revisit it. Yeah. Okay. Other comments or a motion so we can go home. Your Honor, I move we approve new business item number three. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And with that, we are adjourned in record time. Well done, Council. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. <laughs>